These are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Bill Groot, your host for today. For and welcome to day four of our QC ALM Expert Week. Um, we've got a pretty busy program uh, today. We have six presentations, and we're going to start off with the Globalization Group intro. Um, so we're going to pass it on to that team in a minute. Just want to give some logistic information. If you have questions during the presentation, please go to the right-hand side where you see questions, and you type your questions in there. And then after the presentation has completed, the globalization team will address your questions. So we're going to get started now, and I will pass it over to Gabriel, who will start the presentation for the globalization team. Gabriel, all up to you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome, all of you, to join our session today. Um, this is Gabriel from the HP Software Globalization Group. Uh, and I'm so honored today to be one of the representatives of my group to hold this session together with the rest of the teammates who are also in this call. Um, we would like to, uh, to introduce our globalization team with all of you, which we hope can help you better understand how area and QC localization is done, and also uh, take this great chance to collect all your valuable feedback directly, which we believe will help us improving the localization quality of ARM QC products quite a lot. Okay, let me share my slide. Um, yeah, this is a, a very general introduction of the structure of our, our um, globalization group. Our group is now providing localization related services for HP software organization. And most of our work is related to our HP software product R&D team which is look to look like software UI and a documentation. And of course, currently, we are also having co a cooperation with HP software marketing team to support localization of marketing materials as well. Uh, our group have around currently 60 uh, members. So Tom Moore is leading the whole group, as you can see from the slide. Um, he is based in Israel. And the Tom, we have three uh, different function teams like uh, localization project management team which is led by Holly, linguist QA team led by Vincent, and a functional QA team led by myself. And meanwhile we have another two key staff under Tomer. Uriel is our IT architecture who is providing tech support to different software product owning teams in order to help them to design better localization architect as well as improve uh, internationalization quality, and uh, Sharon is our uh, program and operation manager of all the whole group to define our overall localization strategy, like localization, uh, which like localize which product into which languages, and etc. And both Uriel and Sharon are co-located with Tomer in Israel, while Holly, Vincent, and myself we are all located in China. There are several uh, highlights I want to point out. Okay, in FY14 last year, overall we successfully released 150 plus products across ITM and security product units. ITM here means the combination of both IDOM and ADM product units. And by the way, ARM and QC belongs to ADM product unit. And we are providing language support up to 18 by now. So that means we are having a quite big portfolio to support. And from QA or testing perspective, we are having um, investing quite a lot of automation to reduce, um, replace actually manual work in order to improve efficiency. Two key accomplishments uh, that we did last year is over uh, Ninety-one percent of products have auto deployment, and sixty percent uh, plus percent of products have GUI-based automation in use. So we are becoming more and more efficient. And the third, and not least, and we are using quite a lot of cutting-edge technology to make the whole process easier and smoother. Like we are adopting a machine translation uh, for certain doc documentation translation using automation and uh, some new translation tools 
to shorten the translation turnaround time and improve quality. Okay, uh, this is a slice to give us a more clear picture about the role and the responsibility of the three major functional teams inside of a group. And the first one is a uh, localization project management group we call LPM. As I said, it is now led by Holly and responsible for the managing of the localized projects from A to Z and play as the role of focal point for stakeholders outside of a group and related to uh, all these relays like uh, DAF, like QA, like uh, IE. And the second is my group, FQA group, and is responsible for the function testing, both manual and automation for localized products. And the last group uh, is LQA group. It's led by Vincent and is responsible for the linguistic testing of localized products. Okay, let's uh, have a quick look of a uh, typical uh, localization process of one product. For example, we have a product ABC in plan for localization and our globalization project manager and a corresponding product manager will initiate the discussion about the resource prioritization as well as sales inhibitors. And then to decide the general scope of the localization, like how many languages for UI, for doc, and time. We'll kick off the project, and usually we are uh, running localization project in an ideal way for most of the cases and closely aligned with product R&D teams. So in each sprint, we will go through small cycles like translation, function testing, and linguistic testing. And then after quite a few uh, sprints or iterations, the localized project product will be ready to get released. And nowadays, most of our products are following the same ship model, which means the localized version will be able to get released as the same day, uh, along with the English one. Okay, let's go to the next slide. This is picture shows how the current localization status of ARM and PC uh, look like. So for ARM PC, sorry, ARMQC, we are localizing uh, its software UI into overall 10 different non-English languages. They are Japanese, simplified Chinese, German, French, Spanish, Russian, Dutch, Italian, Brazil, Portuguese, and Korean. And we are also providing documentation localization for it into eight different languages. Here you can see. Um, here, documentation usually means online help and some other doc, docs like admin guide, installation guide, and so on. And if you want to know more details about it, so feel free to submit your questions and we can follow it later on. Here, I also attach the PC Performance Center localization status for your reference. It is now localized into six languages for UI and four languages for documentation. And I also want to mention the following points to let you understand the importance of localization for HP software business. Uh, in many non-English markets, localization is a make or break for deals. And over 50% of HP revenue, software revenue, comes out of the USA. And in the rising market like China, Latin America, Eastern Europe, and the Middle East, Localization is a requirement for penetration. Okay, so that's all from my side for our group introduction. And thank you all for your listening. So as I said, uh, please feel free to submit your question and later on 
we will be able to uh, answer them online or follow it up with you offline if we cannot solve them within this session. Uh, okay, now I would like to move the turn to Ovard, and Ovard is uh, our program manager of the Share Tech Group, currently driving the customer successful activities with our globalization group. As I said earlier, uh, we would like to use this session as a great chance to collect your valuable feedback about the satisfaction of localization. And Ovard will share the content of questionnaire we made and hope we can hear your voice and help us to improve. So Ovard, this is your turn now. Hello Ovard, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Ah, hi, Abad. Yes, I can hear you very, hi. very well. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, um, um, uh, Gabriel, for the uh, introduction. It was very good. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ovad. As Gabriel said, I'm the uh, PMO in the shared services uh, team in uh, HP. Basically, um, I'm, you know, uh, supporting and leading with the globalization team. Uh, the customer success uh, program uh, this year. Um, basically, let me give you uh, some background um, uh, about the team uh, and the changes that we've done during the past year. Um, in, in, in the past, basically, globalization work on approach of uh, you know taking uh, tasks from the uh, business unit, the product, based on their needs. And basically, if we get, uh, for example, uh, a request from the BSM team to translate to Chinese, uh, we have, uh, within our project budget, timelines, whatever, we manage to uh, provide uh, this uh, uh, translation to the BSM team on the right time. But uh, we start understand, uh, we start understanding that this is not good enough because uh, we know um, um, we need to work closely with the customers in the uh, field and basically sometimes we see that uh, we can get uh, information out of uh, our tools basically the um, um, support tools Google Analytics tools and everything that we can you know uh, get more information about our customers behaviors if someone is asking to translate to Japanese and we see, and we see that French is, is more uh, attractive right now and our competitors are, you know, uh, translating to, uh, to France because there is a huge market there. So we would like to have this information on our hand and help the business unit and the product to understand that, hey, there is a better approach, better way that we can uh, uh, do uh, uh, a better work. So we are changing uh, the approach of the globalization to be part of the uh, making decision on each uh, uh, um, junction of uh, each BU. And for that, we use many tools, many channels, and one of them uh, is the server survey that we are running right now with the customers. We're seeing uh, many customers answering these servers, surveys, sorry, and we are, you know, aligning these uh, answers with the Google Analytics and all the uh, database uh, that we're getting on a uh, monthly basis. And we saw uh, in 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 few months we saw uh, the productivity and the efficiency that we have managed to implement inside the team in terms of uh, be uh, uh, more uh, you know uh, to act faster to act with the high quality and uh, the more knowledge that we are can gain over this channel the more efficiency that we can put and this is exactly what we are asking from our customers uh, also to be part of this uh, process and give us feedbacks all the time if uh, there is more documentation that uh, we would like to support if there is uh, issues with with the quality of the translation uh, we know that um, most of the languages that we're releasing are in high quality but uh, sometimes you know the, the small things we can catch it and of course the customers can help us can help us to get the right picture from the field uh, so we've created a survey for this year and we're running it through the um, uh, expert days we're running it through the premier support uh, uh, we're targeting our customers and this is basically uh, give us uh, huge uh, information and, and focus us on the right uh, writing uh, for the localized uh, product so um, if if 
if someone would like to participate in our survey, uh, we would be happy to get uh, uh, a request from you, and we can direct the survey directly to you, uh, and we get the, uh, uh, the more detail uh, with the past. And now, I think that um, um, we can be open for questions, I think so. Uh, and if we can get questions from the audience, that would be great to utilize this time. We have like 20 minutes left, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, right now, there are no questions coming in, but we can give the, the customers uh, a few moments to uh, okay to write down some questions and then I'll pass it on to the team. But right now there are no questions. Okay. Yeah, and, and let me add uh, something. Uh, internally with HP, uh, we have managed to deliver this approach. Uh, all the BUs, all the uh, product units are very, very satisfied from this approach. Uh, they are, you know, cooperating with us. Uh, that means uh, for, the, uh, uh, for, for the customers, that means that the more information we get from the field, we would be able to direct them through the uh, channels that we have in R&D. We are working very close to R&D on a daily basis. And definitely, we can um, uh, make huge progress on the localization and globalization uh, aspect and areas. So um, um, we offer our team as a direct channel to the field to help us uh, uh, understand what is needed, what is not working that well. And we're definitely listening to the field and uh, work uh, as fast as possible to uh, fit all the requirements. Okay, and we're ready for questions. Um, Yeah, by the way, uh, by implementing the tools in the globalization team, uh, as Gabriel said, he's uh, basically leading the functional testing on the uh, non-English product. We saw that we have managed to set the priority uh, based on the field, and we saw that we have uh, more time uh, for efficiency and automation, and all these kinds of stuff are giving us uh, a lot of uh, uh, Abilities uh, to improve the process internally as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks a lot. Yeah, actually, uh, if any uh, online audience, if you have any question regarding to my slides or introduction of our group, if you want anything you want to know more in, in details about us or in details about how we do uh, localization for ARM or, or, or QC, feel free to submit your questions. Yeah. And um, in the call, we also have some other members. Uh, they are really in charge of the testing or localization of these products, so can help you to answer some of the detailed questions. Yep. So I guess oh, there is a question. I can say question, but it uh, got lost. How? Okay, you you move it to Gabriel. Yeah. The question is, how long does it take to add a new language from start to finish? To, to finish. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it depends. You know, uh, currently, as I said, usually we are localizing uh, ARM and uh, 
QC into 10 different languages. If we have a new languages come in, and usually we will analyze the, the scope. And so, um, yeah, for this specific question, probably I will need your, some of the support from my teammates, Holly, <laughs> as the, uh, you know, the team leader of uh, LPM team. So Holly's team is in charge of the whole um, project management and will give you some of the, uh, yeah, maybe some of the details about the, the rough estimate if we add a new language for AM. Okay. So Holly can, yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, Holly, hi, hi. Okay, hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Holly. I'm, I'm in charge of the Lucrative Product Manager team. So um, um, I may miss a question, but I'd like to know is the question uh, specific for certain, uh, for, per, for LM or for PC, or is it not referring to any particular product? No, um, no it, it, was so, a, it, was a, it was a general question, say okay. that how, how, long, how long it takes to translate uh, a new uh, version. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so basically it varies uh, depending on the products. So I can give maybe a general uh, idea. It can vary from something like three months to six months. And uh, uh, depends on the size of the product. I would say for product like ALM, it may take longer. And uh, because it's, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, all the, the most uh, manual intensive work in, a local, in localizing a product um, is about translation. And translation is uh, um, kind of, you know, um, it purely depends on the total uh, work counts. So, um, yeah, so in general, the concept is um, the duration can be from uh, three to six months, something like that. Um, but uh, it's really re rely on um, the you know, total work counts and also uh, uh, for big product like ALM, it also requires uh, quite a long time for testing on the um, uh, on our site. Okay. Um, there's another question that came in. It says, "How do you decide to add a new language?" Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, this is the question about how we decide to add a new language, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Holly, why don't you take this okay. one? For okay. Okay. Yeah, sure, no problem. Okay. Um, so, um, usually, uh, we are having requests here received from the field team and uh, they or the product team and they may come back to us and they see potential either it could be a potential uh, request in certain language country or they see there is a real pipeline um, in, in certain language so that's how we usually uh, make the decision to um, add a new language and uh, but for products, which say, for instance, is for the DOL one products, and uh, sorry, the, the virtual one for brand new products, we usually start by, you know, out of our previous experience, you may uh, saw from the slide Gabriel showed just now, we have the uh, tier one, tier two, tier three language. Um, so um, if it's a brand new product, we may, you know, out of our experience we may say we start with uh, yeah, level one products say Japanese, simplified Chinese and then we see how it goes. So that's usually how we make the decision. Okay, so yeah, just to, to add to this your to, to, to your answers, uh, basically yeah, it depends on the field, depends on the uh, mm -hmm. business unit request, and, and 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 basically we saw in the past even cases that customers it does it was in, in French lately that uh, we saw a customers that really wants a new uh, um, language because uh, his, uh, the mass of the users are located in, 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 in country uh, A, so we managed to uh, close the deal for HP because we were very active and less than two months, like two and a half months, we managed to uh, transfer the product for this customer on, on his uh, uh, region. So sometimes it's uh, it's take uh, we're taking decision based on really uh, specific needs. Sometimes, rarely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. And and of course, as I mentioned, of course, as I mentioned, the more tools that we are adding to uh, the globalization to be more focused and exposed to the field, 
uh, the decisions that we're taking are more uh, uh, efficient. So we know the field, we fill the field, and we can uh, decide on the right languages uh, even without, uh, you know, uh, going to the uh, end customer. Yeah. Exactly. Just as Albert mentioned, that we consider the sales inhibitors from field team or pre-sales or sales guys, right? And to decide where we should put our budget to to localize which kind of language for certain product. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Another question just came in: Is what are the criteria needed to fulfill before a new language gets added? Mm hmm Okay. So uh, if I understand it correctly, yeah, this is about what kind of uh, prerequisite, right? <laughs> the criteria we need to know in advance before, you know, we we start our uh, localization, right? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So or Gabriel, maybe you, you, can start, you can start. You can start with the product readiness, right, Gabriel? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the first of all, uh, like uh, we said, from the product side, of course, we have to make sure the product design, the sale from technology, software technology part, is support localization. Because usually we know um, our dev engineers or you know, product team, usually on the team, will develop the English version. Why? And uh, but they need to consider quite a lot in their architecture level, so make sure yeah all the UI will be able able to dis extract it and into some of the uh, you know translatable files. So in all, we, 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 with that kind of uh, features is implemented, then they will allow our team to extract these files to localize them from English into target languages. So this is very important what we need to do and internally this is what we usually uh, in our day-to-day -day work to coach our R&D team and uh, collaborate with them to make sure in the functional level it is done. Right? This is from technology perspective. And um, um, also some other perspective maybe, <laughs> I'm not sure whether Holly you can, you can share some of your opinion about um, yeah, other criteria. I explained from the function of te testing yeah. part because yeah. that's really the. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, uh, well, we may also uh, uh, consider. Uh, I mean, um, um, the potential, you know, um, the ROI um, and the cost we need in order to localize this product into a new language and the potential revenue we expect to generate out of that. That could sometimes also be a kind of criteria we are taking into consideration. Yeah. But, you know, in the case, you know, like Ola just now mentioned, if there's a real customer need and they, they, they require that, that specific language support, you know, sometimes, you know, that's something we will definitely also do to support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, basically, we have two major criteria. <laughs> One is from the technology perspective. Another is from mm -hmm. the you know our perspective, marketing needs, comparing it with our uh, investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next question that came in is, how is the new language being added? Is there a patch or a minor upgrade? Okay. Um, yeah, let me share my, my understanding. If anything yeah, missing or wrong, please correct me <laughs> about it and also uh, Holly. Yeah, usually uh, uh, according to uh, HP software policy, we will add new languages only for, um, let me say, major or minor version, right? And we are not, not, not allowed to add new languages into minor, minor or patch releases. This is what I understand. But there are also some very, very specific case. Yeah, we will probably add maybe into into patches or minor, minor. But for majority of our HP software products, we will only consider to add new languages from major and the minor releases. Yeah, I'm not sure whether this question is also about from technical point of view, because uh, like, uh, you know, language pack, is that something the, the question is mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, so, if we talk, yeah. Yeah. Maybe Gary can comment on that. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, we have a different kind of ways to implement uh, localization. Sometimes we will install the English version as the as the base and then apply the language pack. This is a very typical way. But nowadays we have a more uh, modern solution with one installation you can have all the languages uh, localize the files into 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 the installation. That means uh, nowadays we have more uh, web-based products so you what you just need to do is change your browser locale and after the installation all different uh, locales I mean the property files will be uh, installed and uh, after you change your browser locales the corresponding languages will be able to show up so this is very uh, typical way so both 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 two mechanisms I mentioned will be in use for ARM, if I understand correctly for QC we are using English word version first and then apply the language pack by what I know, that this will be changing in the future, yeah, in the roadmap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question just came in is, how many languages does ALM version 12, how many will they, will they support? Um, yes, currently, <laughs> I think this is what I shared in my slides. Um, I think this is the current status for ALM 12.50. Um, yeah, this is what we're going to support. So I think it's the same for ARM 12, if I understand correctly. But um, I think we'll double check. Okay. So generally, we are currently support over all 10 different languages for ARM. I mean the software UI part. Okay. Uh, if we talk about the documentation, like on I have, like uh, like uh, like installation or the main guide, we'll localize it in, into eight different languages, as I showed in this this slide. Okay. Let me see here. There are no other questions that have come in right now. Um, so based on that, I want to thank the globalization team for their time today. Uh, for the people on the phone, if you still have questions after this presentation, you can go into the Quality Center Support Customer Form where um, you could submit your questions. Uh, this session was being recorded, so we will uh, upload a, a specific post in that specific form uh, with information and you could provide your feedback on the presentation itself, uh, on the expert week itself, on any questions that you might have for the globalization team and then we will address those questions. So again, the globalization team, thank you very much for your time today. People on the phone, thank you for your time today. We have five more sessions today so I hope to uh, see you also in the other sessions later on today. Thanks again, and if I don't speak to you or hear you, um, have a nice day.